So, here we are. This is Eclipse Edge of Light. I'm going to go to the end of it. Now, the thing you should know about this and what I've been toying with is the idea that when you're doing a narrative in a VR experience or a VR game, you have some technical limitations um, as far as what you can do with like actually having the player interact with computer-generated characters and the like. And so what I've been discovering is that designers have been using, in a way, mise-en-scene to function as narrative. So what you get of the story, you get a lot through the ambience, and what you find in the settings. And also in the music. And I don't know whether you can hear the audio uh, of this particular game. Because there is background music and it's actually very good. But this is the uh, this is the finale of this particular game, Eclipse. The setup is that you have crash landed on a planet for reasons unknown, and you are wandering through the landscape. As you wander through the landscape, you are discovering that the planet has been ravaged by both uh, apparently environmental uh, abuse, and also religious zealotry. And right now, you've, uh, and by the way, this is a puzzle game, just in case, uh, just, ca just in case you didn't know. So there are various challenges and puzzles that you have to solve, a lot of them using this thing here, which is called an artifact which is a kind of a multifunction widget, uh, which does a lot of things. You'll see a couple of uses of it in the finale. It doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, but among other things that you can do with it is you can throw it, thrilling and smash things with it. It'll also serve as a detector of hidden objects, so you can use it to uh, find hidden objects. Uh, it also uh, functions as a kind of a tractor beam that you can use to lift and carry objects. You're not going to see any of that in this, uh, but let me show you this. Okay, so oh, let me back up a second. And so several points throughout the game you encounter what seem to be escape pods. Uh, earlier in the game, you find a few escape pods that are in various levels of damage. Uh, here, you're looking at another escape pod. But as you might notice, it's not really a tangible kind of thing. It's, it's a fake out. You're supposed to move up to it. And as you get closer, ah, it's gone. And here is one of the religious artifacts, a prayer wheel. Oh, and uh, yeah, the artifact does that at this point. But let me show you the religious artifact, and let me show you one of the other game functions, which is when you find these things, you can scan them. There we go. And that's the information, that's the translation. Apparently what has happened is that the planet was taken over by something called the Prophet, who became 
uh, a megalomani blah, blah, megalomaniac and imprisoned and enslaved uh, his people. Okay. What happens when the artifact does this is that it becomes kind of a, a little guidepost uh, or, I don't know, tour guide? Somebody give me the right term for that. Watch what happens. Oh, you want me to follow you? Okay. Uh, okay. If you insist. Okay. And I, oh yeah, no, I don't think I'm doing that. But you don't have to because wait for it. Yeah. I think this is one of the more impressive moments of the game. What you've learned at this point is that the tower, when it is restored, is going to lead to the prophet returning and once again, enslaving his people. The only problem with that is that the planet is deserted, so I don't know how the prophet is going to do that. But let's not ponder on that much. One of the things you do have here is a jetpack that you can use to jump vast distances. However, your fuel is <coughs> limited but not so limited that it is usually not that hard for you uh, to make it from one point to another. Ready? Here we go. Phew. Okay. Going to go here. And yay. And let me point out that that is it for flying for this game. That's the last time I have to do that. And thank God, because let me tell you, one of the things, you know, I think that is common in human experience is that you have this dream of flight. Uh, you have this desire to actually want to fly, uh, you know, so essentially representing an escape from, uh, from, li from uh, the encumbrances of life and responsibilities and all that stuff. And it's a wonderful thing, the dream of flight, unless you happen to have a mild case of vertigo. And then flying becomes actually not such a fun thing. At least not for me. The flying parts of this game are the parts that I really, really hated. And there's one point uh, where you have to do it a lot. And I was not relishing that particular sequence. While we're here, though, let's take a look at the scenery. I'll say this, the narrative of the game, when it comes down to it, doesn't make all that much sense. But the settings are really, really impressive. Let's explore more. Look at this. Yeah. Even when I got frustrated with some of the puzzles in this game, it's the settings that kept me coming back because, let's face it, this is awesome stuff. Um, and I don't know, maybe it doesn't look that awesome in 2D, but when you are immersed in it, it is pretty great. 
another artifact. Let's take a look at that. Come on. Maybe I have to get closer. Oh, not that close. Come on. There we go. Okay. Well, I don't have the artifact anymore. However, if the game is counting on me to resolve this, there it, the game is in for a big disappointment because <laughs> pure of heart. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, here comes another nice little moment that is supposedly the prophet there. The prophet was, uh, according to the narrative of the game, the prophet was killed by his disciples. You find this out after a while. Or I'm, you know, when I said there wasn't any more flying, I lied. By the way, for in in most cases, the designers have been very courteous in designing the flying challenges so that they are not all that hard to achieve. As I said, there was one point where it was really, really difficult. And that is why I did not go back to that level of the game, because I just didn't want to go through uh, the, uh, the like two hours of trying to make one single jump. A lot of this narrative, by the way, that you're seeing here is pretty redundant. It, it gets repeated a lot during the game. But it's always nice to have a reminder, isn't it? Can't tie a figurative string around your virtual finger to remember. These platforms activate things which is what shall happen here. Get ready. This is, this is a really nice moment. Here we go. This doesn't help my vertigo either, by the way, but. And again, when you're immersed in this, this is, Quite spectacular. The eclipse is coming. And here we are. Again, I do hope you can hear this music because this is some really amazing stuff. The altar is here. The artifact is here. And the eclipse has occurred. All we have to do is, oh no! No, that's, 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 that's mine. That's my ball. <laughs> you get away from it. Okay. I'm actually doing nothing here. This is... Okay. Pretty awesome, right? Here's an interesting point now. If I stand here... This'll just go on for however long I'm standing here. 
game doesn't give you any instruction. Game, do game doesn't tell you, but what you have to do here, and I'm not kidding, is do the slow, dramatic camera track back. And evil is defeated, as it always is, by backing away from it. <laughs> uh, yes, well. <laughs> and this is a repeat of the opening sequence. And we get our credit roll. And so, yes, that's the end of Eclipse, Edge of Light. And yes, you have saved the planet from being taken over again by the prophet who would enslave the people who no longer exist on the planet. Look, you got a game to create and some beautiful art. You got to slap some sort of story on there, right? I really do like this, but it is worth uh, experiencing all the way through, by the way. So I'm going to end this now because.